Hi, I'm Scott Simme, the Editor-in-Chief of DroneDJ.com. It's a cold day out here, but not too cold to keep us from coming out and testing the new DJI Motion Controller. So we'll quickly go through the features. There is the power button. This is your throttle. There is the emergency brake, DJI calls it. You hit that black button, give it a tap, and the drone will stop and hover. Hold it for a longer period, the drone will return to home. The red button will unlock the propellers and get the drone ready to fly, and then you can launch the drone and have it take off with that. And you've got a control on this side for your gimbal. The tilt on the gimbal and the record, that will also, depending on whether it's a long or short push, switch between video and still photos. So, let's try it out. I love that sound. Okay, so it's a double click on the red button to start the drone and a long click for takeoff. So let's start her up. There we go. All right, so now it's press and hold the lock button to take off. I'm in that green zone, so I'm just going to press and hold. All right. You know, it's funny, I'm tempted to take the goggles off because I, although I'm seeing the view, part of me just wants to see the drone because we're in a bit of a tight space here. But let's, uh, let's just point it away from David and uh, hopefully not right at me. I can see the shadow of it and see if we can move a bit. And you can see it's fighting the wind a bit. We are pretty windy. We had gusts over 30 kilometers an hour. So we're kind of at the upper end of uh, where we should be flying the drone. But uh, certainly you can see there's a yaw. I'm just rotating the controller in my hand. All right, so it's taken me a little bit to kind of figure this out, but now I'm kind of getting it. And there's a little circle that I'm seeing inside of the goggles. And that circle is kind of dead center on what the camera is seeing. So you can see when I move this up, this is moving the gimbal up and down. So obviously my view in the goggles is, is changing. I'm seeing, you know, David right now, but seeing up and down. And then you simply point that circle where you'd like to fly. So right now I'm pointing it over at this tree and of course I probably pointed completely in the wrong direction and I'm going to pull the trigger and put my faith that that's where the drone is going to go. So let's see. There we go and I see some I see some people uh, over there looking at it so I'm not going to go any closer. But that's sort of the point. You move this to the direction you want to go and pull the trigger for throttle. So I'm just going to take my goggles partway off. There we are. Yeah, we got some kids looking. So I'm going to fly just up over the reeds behind me. And again, because that kind of keeps me away from people. All right, so we're going to try the return to home feature and hopefully it'll uh, just come back and land on or close to the pad. And if it looks like it's going to be an issue, I'll, I'll take it out of uh, the auto return to home. All right, so it was not returning to the proper home. We actually had this issue the other day where we took off. We, it, it was automatically returning to home for a battery issue and it landed about 12 feet away from where we'd taken off and we're seeing pretty much the same behavior today. Now we do have a fair bit of wind, but the wind really should not be an issue. It's capable of fighting the wind. So 
Not sure, maybe it's not quite as accurate on the return to home, maybe that's a firmware issue. So we'll see, we canceled out of the auto return to home. Okay, it's coming into land. All right. All right, so we've come to a little pathway because really the key to the motion controller is that the drone has to be in motion. And by that, I don't mean just sort of hovering and that you want to do fine adjustments. It needs to be going somewhere. And that's when this thing really shines. It looks like it's coming in. We've got 25 satellites, normal mode, somebody walking by. All right, so we're gonna start by just uh, turning on the props. Okay, and now we're gonna press and hold for auto liftoff. There's a guy way down the path. There's a guy and his dog, can you see him? Yep. Okay. All right, so now I've got that white circle pointed down the path. And just going to cheat a little bit. All right, let's see what we can do. And we'll stop and turn around. And we'll fly this back in our direction. See us there. Okay, so after playing around with it a little bit, I've got some thoughts. This is great once you're up in the air and you're going somewhere. When you're moving, it's terrific. But when you're actually stopped and you wanna do something like bring it down from there and land over there easily, it's not quite as intuitive as you might think. If you're holding it a little bit off, the drone just keeps rotating. It's just not a great device for that sort of fine control where, a regular controller with sticks, you can put it exactly where you want. This, for me at least, and I'm new with it, but I found that difficult. But when you're out, as we saw earlier, and you're flying down a trail or you're flying out over the wilds, it's fantastic. So whether it's a fit for you, that's ultimately up to you. I think a lot of people who already have experience with drones, they're gonna prefer to stick with a manual controller. But it's a really interesting experience, and for some, truly an innovation. I'm Scott Simi, Editor-in-Chief of Drone DJ. Thanks for joining me.